TXVs are not terribly complicated. TXVs have one job to perform and one job only, and that is to meter liquid refrigerant into the evaporator coil, and it's trying to match the same rate of evaporation of that refrigerant. So it's trying to, to do that in in uh, in harmony that way as far as the liquid refrigerant going into the evaporator coil there are four main points of operation that i'll point out about a txv and the the first one you have inlet pressure you have uh, evaporator pressure you have spring pressure and and then you also have uh the the pressure that's created by the sensing bulb of the TXV. The superheat spring on the TXVs that we incorporate at Nortec Global HVAC, the spring pressure is fixed, if you will. That this is, you can see obviously this is not an adjustable type of TXV and this is the most common style that you're going to find uh, in the TXV kits or on coils that have the valve already factory installed. So these are fixed superheat TXVs so you don't have to worry about trying to adjust them or tune them if you will that helps simplify uh, their service and operation if you will the inlet pressure the evaporator pressure those are factors that that you have control over obviously with things like refrigerant charge and airflow and and then also the protection of the uh, sensing bulb I cannot stress this enough, particularly when you are dealing with factory installed valves on evaporator coils, two things that you want to make a permanent habit. So you want to protect the valve body uh, using cold rags while you're brazing. The other thing is that if you are dealing with factory TXV on an evaporator, disconnect the sensing bulb off of the suction header tube. You have got to protect the sensing bulb. The sensing bulb is filled with gas, and as that gas reacts to a change in temperature, it expands or contracts, and then it applies pressure through the capillary tube onto the head of the valve, and that's part of one of the four main functions or steps, if you will, that works to uh, allow the TXV to to open and close. So you want to protect the sensing bulb from heat and the best way to do that is to just completely disconnect it off of the suction line altogether. This is, uh, this is a, a micro channel coil here and so what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a really quick uh, down and dirty run through on how you would add a TXV kit onto these coils. Uh, here is your uh, liquid line tube here, and here is the union where the factory metering device would sit. And obviously, I've already pre-loosened this, but you're going to take this liquid line piece, you're going to loosen that up. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're going to depress the Schrader, let the nitrogen charge off of the coil. You're going to take this liquid header piece out of your way. You're going to remove the factory installed piston that sits down inside the, the well of the union fitting there. And then again, obviously I'm just, for the purpose of the video, I'm just doing this, you know, pretty, pretty fast here, if you will. Obviously for the purpose of the video, I'm just doing it as quickly and as I can, it would be a much, much prettier job one, you know, when you're doing this out in the field, but then you're reattaching the liquid line point onto the top side of the valve. And then you're attaching the external equalizer line onto the process tube here that's coming off of the suction header tube. You're gonna remove the Schrader core out of that valve body. So you're just making that attachment point there. And last but not least, you're gonna be mounting and clamping the, uh, the sensing bulb for the TXV. 
let me just stress again and point out, obviously for the purpose of the video, I'm doing all of this really, really quickly. Uh, I'm certainly not uh, doing a, you know, I'm not doing it step by step by step, but the whole point that uh, I'm wanting to illustrate here is just give you the, a basic overview of just how easy it is to, to be able to add on a TXV kit to these coils. It's not a complicated process by any stretch of the imagination. If you have a factory installed TXV, obviously all this will already be mounted for you. You won't have, you won't need to worry about, uh, worry about these. But the, the two critical things that I, I wanna just stress again, when you are dealing with a factory installed TXV, you absolutely, when you are doing your brazing process during install, you, you want to make sure that you are using a very, very low pressure nitrogen matrix in the system while you are doing your brazing. Uh, so you're talking anywhere from, you know, one to two PSI, something like that in terms of nitrogen. What that nitrogen is going to do is while it's flowing through the copper, you know, through, through your line set and up through you know, a dryer and a metering device, what have you, as that nitrogen is flowing through there and you're, you're going through your brazing process, it will help to displace moisture and oxygen as you heat moisture and oxygen in the brazing process without that nitrogen what will happen is you will start to form a scale on the interior of the copper tubing once you're completed with your braze your braze joints now done you might think the thing's a work of art and you love it and then when you go to move on to your next step in the installation, you end up dislodging all of that scale and you shove it, you know, downstream and you might block off a meat, uh, like a dryer, or you may plug up a metering device, uh, things like that. Um, as an example, I'll see if we can catch or if we can, if we can get it here in the shot here, but like as an example on this liquid header piece, if you look carefully inside there, you will see there is a there's a filter screen that sits right there. There's a very fine mesh screen that sits there, and its whole purpose in life is to protect the metering device from getting a bunch of junk to collect at it. So that's where that nitrogen matrix comes in. It's very, very important. It's a very important step when you're doing your install that you have a nitrogen matrix in the piping while you are performing your brazing so that you work to prevent the buildup of that scale so that when you continue to move on through the install that you don't dislodge all of that, have it scrub off the interior wall of the tubing and then become stuck up against that uh, strainer screen because it's just going to act just like a restriction then at that point. So you, you want to protect that and nitrogen is the way to do that. I also just want to stress again, you want to make sure on any factory installed TXV on a, on a coil that you want to protect the valve body using cold rags. You want to disconnect the sensing bulb. It literally only takes a minute to disconnect this sensing bulb and to wrap that valve body up before you start getting the torch to it. This tubing heats up very, very quickly and that heat transmits or transfers onto the sensing bulb and it's heating and causing that gas to expand and it's pushing on the head then of the of the valve itself. You want to take those few extra steps to ensure the protection of the valve. Do it ahead of time so that once you're all done and now you're beginning your charging process, you're doing your startup, you're doing your tuning of the system, that you haven't already created a situation for yourself where you're having to now go backwards in steps to uh, deal with a problem on a valve or a restriction, things of that nature. Thanks again for watching.